All right, fellow coders, welcome to this next lesson uh, where we're going to be diving into handling the JWT, the JSON Web Token validation logic. Uh, what we had previously done in our app in this series is we had it to uh, create a JWT, but then we didn't really do anything else in terms of validating that our JSON Web Token is actually good and not expired and, and all that good stuff. So in this lesson, we're going to be diving into how to do that. So if that sounds good to you, stick around. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to it. Um, when we dive into um, this project, I want to give you a bit of background first. So just to give you an update on what we've already done, we've already created uh, something called the JWT Util in Java. It's just a class that gives us many uh, helper methods that allow us to um, do some of the stuff that we need to do today, which is to check and see if our token is expired and whatnot. It's very, very simple. I will show you. The uh, JSON Web Token itself, if you are not familiar, does hold information about its own expiry date. Um, you can actually set this expiry date to be anything you want. You can set it to like almost infinity days from now if you never want it to expire, or you can be aggressive and make it expire within seconds or something. So it's really up to you. You hold the power. Um, and in our application, I think we had it set to be valid for like a week or so. Um, so now our, our token is no longer valid and I'm seeing bugs in the software, which is why I am talking about this now. Um, <laughs> so basically we're going to expand on our um, previous logic that we had in React uh, on the private route. The private route component, uh, its purpose is to essentially detect if someone is navigating to a, a URL, if they're navigating to a URL that should be protected, that should be, in other words, you need to be logged in to access this URL. Um, that's what the private route does. It checks to see, hey, is this protected? You know, do you, are, do you need to access, do you need to be logged in to see this stuff? If you do, then let's make sure that you are logged in. And that's where our current bug is that we need to dive into. So um, basically, here's how the workflow will shake out. In React, we're going to fetch data. Um, it, well, we're going to expand on that private route logic, that component. Um, in doing so, we will fetch data from our uh, backend, from the Java REST API, and check to see if our token is expired or not. So we'll pass in a token and it will give us a response saying if it's expired. If it's not expired, if it's valid, then we just let the code continue as normal. Um, and if the, uh, the token is expired, which will be the new code, then we need to redirect to a login page so that the person can re-log in because, hey, the token has expired. Cool. So that's the plan. Uh, if that sounds good to you, let's get into the coding. So let me flip over to my uh, coding environment. As as I talked about, we're going to be looking at that private route logic. Um, and let me show you the bug itself. Let me go to where is my um, uh, app here. So if I go right to the dashboard page, so localhost 3000 slash dashboard, and I load this page, uh, what you can't see is that we're not properly logged in right? Our, our JWT has expired. So we have a, a, a JSON web token here. It, it's available right here. Um, but that token is expired. And there's nothing on the front end that, you know, informs us of that, of that. If you click on submit new assignment, nothing happens. So this is this is the bug from the front end the UI experience. It's not good because there's no indication that something is wrong. Um, so that's why we are talking about augmenting our private route. Because what it does right now is it just gets the JWT from local storage, which is right here. So it grabs it from local storage and it just basically says, hey, if we have a JSON web token, in other words, if it's not null, then go ahead and pass through what you need to do, um, load up the view that you wanna load up. In this case, it's a dashboard view. So we're seeing the dashboard view, even though we should not. We should be redirected to the login page, hence our bug. So. As I talked about in the workflow, we need to do a fetch here. We need to fetch um, uh, data from the uh, back end to see we need to do some validation. Um, we need to call uh, an endpoint that will validate the token um, so that we can yeah get, actually get a response, right? And, and see, is it valid or is it not valid? Have, has it expired or not? So the service in question, the utility in question, the JWT util that I mentioned, it has this um, is token expired um, method built in. Now, all this does is it gets the expiration date from the token, which just calls the get claim from token. And I'll show you, um, I'll show you again, this could be 
a little bit confusing uh, if you're not familiar, but it's actually quite simple. So let me go to a JWT reader uh, online, JSON Web Tokens. Um, let me expand this. So this has, uh, you know, here's the JW a JWT, an example of one, and it has some stuff over here, but let's go to our actual JWT. So let me grab this guy, the JSON Web Token we have, copy, go in here and paste it into this um, utility. I get rid of the uh, quotes. Um, and basically it's saying, Hey, in, well, is it saying invalid signature? Uh, why would it be invalid? So the, um, the subject it says is Trevor expired, uh, expiry time was January 20th, which was seven days ago. Um, and the, when it was issued was December and expired, you know, that's not seven days. That's like a month. So we had it set to expire a month later. So it has expired and Therefore, uh, we're in trouble. So basically, what the co what the code is doing here, the um, uh, get claim from from uh, get expiry date from token, we just say hey get uh, ex um, run this code to be able to grab this expiry date, right? So the, the token has this, this expiry date, um, and we have um, a way to parse through the JSON by uh, assigning the secret code to that's used to parse it, right? If you don't have a secret code, yeah, I guess you can't parse it properly. Um, and that's what we use to get the expiry date, right? And then basically the is token expired just says, hey, is the ex expiration date before now? New date just says now. So basically it says, hey, as long as the expiry date is in the future, then we're good. But if the expiry date is in the past, guess what? This thing is expired, so it's going to return false. Now, if you do uh, if you do a search here to see is this being used anywhere, um, it's used in validate token. Okay, so um, that's essentially the the uh, all encompassing endpoint that we could or not endpoint, but um, <laughs> utility that we could leverage um, to see if. Uh, the username, you know, equals and everything. Uh, that's actually not bad. I think we might use that, um, which is done inside of the JWT filter. So the filter is something we talked about in the past. We built through. Um, basically, that's why the response is coming back. If you look at the um, uh, assignment submission app, if you look at the network tab, when it tries to get assignments, it gets a 401 unauthorized response. So the reason why it's getting a 401 unauthorized response is that Spring Security by default is looking at this filter and this filter is calling validate token. Okay, so it's automatically, um, you know, expiring or not expiring, but it's automatically rejecting the token uh, when you try to do that fetch request. So what we need essentially to do is build out another fetch request that we can leverage um, probably in our auth controller uh, so that we can see if this thing is valid or not. So we have one for login, but we can have probably another one where we can do a get request. Sorry, my kid was screaming there. Uh, we can do another one um, where we do a get request <clears throat> for this data. So maybe we can have an endpoint. What is this in? This is API auth. And then we can maybe have like a validate. Okay, that's the verb that we can use to um, get a response. So uh, response entity. And I'm not sure yet what we're returning. Whenever you're dealing with JSON um, or REST endpoints, you want to return the response entity. Um, that comes from Spring. It's just a nice way to return a response, which is what we're trying to get here. Um, so that's the return type. The method name can just be validate, uh, maybe token. This doesn't matter. You just want to make sure that you have a good name here. Um, and then uh, what we want to pass in um, as a uh, request param, I guess, is uh, the token itself, right? And I'm using request param here because um, since it's a get mapping, with, with get request, how we pass data with a, pe a get request is via the request parameters, which just looks like, for example, if I were to say, um, you know, localhost, you know, three or 8080 slash API slash aw slash validate, and then question mark token equals blah, blah, blah. Right, so this question mark token equals is what I'm saying for request param here. That's just to, just to um, you know, uh, what's it called? I want to say plug those, join those. Anyway, my brain, woo, 
to tie those knots together to tie those loose ends there we go it is that the one i don't know okay let's focus so um i did a control shift o there to import the get mapping annotation and now we just need to so now we have an endpoint that we can use potentially i probably need to let the, the security is probably going to block this i don't know it depends on how we set up our security we'll see um but we have our validate endpoint where we can pass in the token. And now what do we want to do with this, right? We want to be able to leverage the uh, JWT util, right? JWT util has a, um, what was it that I liked? Uh, generate token, get expiration date from token, validate token. Okay. So it passes in the token and the user details. So, oh, do we have the user details at this point? Uh, let me think um yes i think so maybe i'm actually not sure so we're gonna find out so if we go here and say um authentication uh principle is the annotation this is what we use to grab the user that's logged in from um our uh session so we can pass in that user because the user implements the user object implements user details. So if you go into user object, it implements user details, which means it, it's okay to pass in here because it wants a user details type. And that's okay because we have a user details type. Um, the user implements user details. So this validate token will return a Boolean, which is exa exactly what we want to do, right? So we want to get a Boolean back and we want to say return a response um, entity dot. And we'll say okay i guess and then we'll pass in the validate token um variable name although it's not validate token this is you know is token valid is a better name for that so cool so we have an endpoint that returns um whether or not the, the token is valid um so now we can leverage it we can try to call it from the front end so that's our back end i'm going to save that and it might I forget if, it, if I've set it up to reboot or not. I don't think it actually reboots automatically. Um, you can shift and then shift click to, to um, reboot, or you can click this guy here that'll you know reboot the server. Uh, if you try to start the server without rebooting it, it tries to start another server. Uh, it'll just say, hey, your, you know, your port is being used. Your 8080 port is being used. So if you're seeing that message, it's because you need to stop the other instance, the other uh, web server. So now, Let's see if we can actually call this endpoint. Now, my thought is it won't work because it's going to get blocked by Spring Security, but let's just see. So we'll do a fetch and, um, oh, I think I, I had done a, I had code in here for how to do a fetch. I called it Ajax. There we go. So Ajax is what we want to do. Ajax is my function, my method, I should say, or my function that I created. Um, and it will... Um, do some fancy stuff for sending requests, sending fetch requests to the back end fetch service, right? So we call it Ajax. So this comes from fetch service, which is from services. So I need to import it because it's not importing. I try to do control space. Oh, there we go. Boom. Now it, I, I had the, when you put the brackets in there or the round uh, curly parentheses or whatever, not curly. They put When you put the parentheses in there, it didn't let me import. So now, boom, I was able to import it. So now we need a URL. What is the URL? Well, we know it. It is um, API uh, auth and then validate, I think. Is that what we just created? API auth validate. Yes. And it's a get request. So request method is get. JWT will pass one in. Well... That's if we have a JWT, right? So if we have a JWT, then we want to do an additional step to make sure that's a valid JWT. And then was there anything else? Request body. No, so we don't have a request body. But what we want to pass in for the validate is we want to pass in the, the, the token, right? So we want to say token equals, <clears throat> let me change this to the back tick notation so that we can do the, um, this notation to inject our JWT in there as well. Okay, so cool. That might work, we'll see if that works. And then that has a then. So at least I think it has a then. How does this Ajax work again? So it's gonna send the, oh, but this is gonna get rejected for, 
So I, I don't think we should pass the JWT in here. Because I don't want it to try to authenticate it. <clears throat> right? And we want to we want to allow what we're probably gonna have to do is allow the traffic through here from the spring security point so that it doesn't try to uh, do any validation on it. In other words, inside of our um, security, uh, where's our security stuff? Domain, util, web. Is it just in service? Filter. Come on, what am I missing here? Where's our security config? Oh, it's just in config. Usually I put that in a security package. My bad. Okay. In here, we're saying, hey, all oh, good. Okay, good. So we already have the line here that's saying everything inside of API auth should be permitted. So that's cool. Our API auth validate um, endpoint that we created will already be by default allowed through because of this line right here. So good. We don't need to do anything fancy there. So that means that we don't have to pass our uh, JWT here into the ajax method so the jwt can be null because we don't need to pass a bearer token here in order to uh you know do the get request right so when we're trying to get from this endpoint spring security is not gonna to going to try to um force you to be logged in to be able to call this so and that's okay that's what i want i want to just pass it in, in in the request so that it can be validated there okay so now does it <laughs> return a it returns a fetch and it does the then thing. Okay, so then, cool. We just need to, uh, which it returns the response JSON. So this will return the JSON. Um, so essentially is valid will be a Boolean that it will return. Um, so basically if is valid, right, equals true, which is the data that we're gonna get back from our endpoint, then we're good. Then you can just say, uh, well, if it is valid, then we can return children. If it's not valid, we want to return, well, basically we want to do this. We want to, so I can write this out the long way, but then I'm going to shorten this up. We want to return this here. Okay, so that's that's sort of one way to do this code, but this is just a ternary operator. So there's a quicker way to do this. So we can say uh, the equivalent code for ternary will be return is valid equals true question mark. If it is true, then return children. If it's false, then return the navigate, right? So that is the replacement for this. They both do the same thing. Cool. And then in this case, if JWT, we're already doing this check here for JWT. Is if the JWT exists, we do this. We do this additional check. Um, if the JWT does not exist, right, then we should return navigate to login and then get rid of that, right? So because we were already doing that logic, and this is just we're taking the, the the old ternary operator, which was right here. We're taking this, which is saying, hey, if JWT exists, then return children. But we're saying, no, no, no. If JWT exists, do one more check and then return the children. If the JWT, uh, JWT does not exist, then return login, which is exactly what this else statement is doing. So we can get rid of this because they're both doing the same thing. Now, I'm not going to guarantee this is going to work because this has some tomfoolery here with respect to... Um, this has a promise inside of it. So I don't know if this is going to return correctly because this is inside of a promise. Um, so we might need to do some fanciness here to make it work better. We might need to assign a value here. Like we might need to say const, you know, uh, is valid equals, right? And then, oh no, that's not is valid. Uh, const, you know, return object or something. This, this would be like the view to return. And then we can say return view to return, right? Now this though, I don't, eh, I don't know. We'll see. Let me, let me get rid of this and see if this works. I have a feeling that it's not going to work, but we'll see. Okay. So let's go back to our dashboard um, and refresh the page. 
So we're getting a 500 exception. So you see these 500s. Um, that means that the server is throwing an error. So what is the server doing? So the server is not happy. It's saying JWT expired. So that's interesting. I'm feeling like it shouldn't be what I'm calling the validate endpoint. It shouldn't be <clears throat> being rejected. Hmm. Let me put a breakpoint in here. Shift and then click to reboot in debug mode. And come back here and refresh the page. So hopefully it hits my breakpoint. <clears throat> so it does go in here, it does hit the breakpoint. Great. Do we have a user? So the user is null. So if we say F6 over this, that throws the exception. Okay. So because the user is null, I guess we're getting that that 401 exception. So maybe validate token, uh, the JWT validate token is the wrong thing to call. Maybe we want to say is is expired or whatever. Let me just have a look. So is the is the is token expired is actually private. So <clears throat> interesting. I would like that to be public, but I don't want to make it public if it's not public. So in here, the validate token is what's public. We're passing the token and the user details. The user details are null. So I feel like we need to see where this goes wrong, right? We need to see, we need to let this play through. Ooh, did I, I stop the server? Whoops. We need to let it play through and see where the, the error happens. Um, because I, I don't, yeah, I don't know why it's trying to, um, <clears throat> what's it called? I don't know why it's trying to authenticate the user details. So the user, de user details is null. So if I hit F6 here, is this where the error happens? I would imagine so. Yeah. So the, the exception, I want to hit F6 there. Oops. Yeah, this is just the next one. So let me hit F5 to go in here. Let me hit F5 to go in, step into here. Let me hit F5 to go into the get claim token. So if I hit uh, F6, okay, so it's it's sort of nested in there. That's where the error happens, right? That's where we have the, um, the JWT expired exception is happening. So let me play this through. Um, we, this, it, it hit this same thing four times or five times, which is why I'm able to keep on doing the same thing I just did. So let me F5 into it, F5 into it, F5 into this one. So this is what throws somewhere in here. Um, this is what throws that exception, right? So that's a little bit annoying. It's almost like the, the validate token here. I want to say, I want to do a try catch or something, right? And the catch can be uh, expired JWT exception is what we're going to catch. Expired JWT exception is what we're catching. And then if we catch that exception, then we know that's the exception, right? So we can return, um, you know, false because it's not valid. Um, we could also return more information than just a Boolean. We can return a message to say like, oh, you, your login is expired or something. Um, anyway, we, we can make that better at some point if we, if we need to. For now, this though, if this goes through, we can just say return validate token. Right? And I thought I renamed this. Is valid token. I must have messed that up. Um, why is that saying? Oh, right. Sorry. Response. I need to return a response entity dot okay, and I'm wrapping that in or wrapping the is valid token around that, and then that should be okay. Is it going to complain about not handling all the exceptions? I guess it's good. Okay. I thought maybe it would want me to put another return after the try catch. So let's reboot that. Um, let's reboot or refresh our page. 
So now what'll happen is if I hit F6 over this, it's gonna throw the exception, but we're gonna catch that exception. Boom. So we caught the exception, and we can just convert, we are just going to return false. Okay? So that's better. So now we don't have an actual exception happening. We're returning a response back to our front end. Now, having said that, let me clear our stuff here. So we get a response back, 200 okay. The response is just false, but then it doesn't seem like it's redirecting me to, so that's where I, I was I was thinking this was gonna be the problem, right? All right, so uh, some time has passed, just like that. Um, I spent another half an hour going back and forth on this, and I, I was trying to decide if I wanted to include all that half an hour of me struggling, and I don't think it provides a lot of value for you because um, I never come to a real resolution or never came to a resolution in the video that I had just recorded. Um, so instead, I'm going to compress half an hour of me bumbling around, which, like I said, normally I, I like to include that, but that's just a bit too much bumbling around. And I'm going to present you with essentially what I tried to do to solve this problem and then what I ended up doing that I landed on that makes a lot of sense. So um, what I'm trying to do here, my, my hypothesis was that I should you know, assign a return value here that I should try to have it say, um, you know, this is the, uh, the view to return or something like that. And then say, return that view to return here. Um, the, the problem with this is that this Ajax function, this call, um, it returns a promise. Okay. So when it returns a promise, that means that it's, it is not uh, synchronous, which means it's asynchronous, which means when I try to return a view, this view to return doesn't have, it hasn't rendered, uh, rendered, it hasn't returned from the promise yet. So it's essentially returning you just an empty promise, an unresolved promise, which is what you see, I'm pointing to my screen here, you can't see me pointing. Um, this white screen here is, you know, I guess what you call its attempt to try to um, show uh, an un unresolved promise as a view. It can't. Right, that, is, that doesn't compute. So um, then I tried to spin my wheels using uh, async and await. Async and await is a way to, uh, are two keywords that you use in JavaScript um, that are used to solve the problem of asynchronous code um, and, and treating it like it is synchronous. In other words, where you would have to say, you could await the promise here. So when you await the promise, the problem with using await is the function that's using this await needs to be asynchronous, which means that this private route function here would need to be marked as a async, right? Async. Then the code compiles, but again, it doesn't fix it over here. Um, Cause now you have an asynchronous functional component that it doesn't play well, I guess, with, with um, I, that one I can't answer, but I just know that it doesn't work. Um, I can't tell you why it doesn't work, but it didn't work. So I spent so long trying to fix this problem and went around in circles to try to solve it with async and await, and it just didn't work. So then I said, okay, let me, let me abandon this attempt at assigning it to um, a return type or whatever, or, a, or, you know, assign it to a variable and then returning the variable. And I said, I Googled around, I said, how do you solve this problem? I would like to render a view only once I receive the data back from a pro promise. So this is how do you render a React view based on waiting for a promise to resolve is the word that it's, it's called. And basically the, the slightly janky but fully functional workaround is to store some state that you will change when the promise is done. So we're kind of familiar with this concept, it's called loading right? It's still loading. So what you're doing is um, you're going to assign an is loading variable is loading to state. So use state. Uh, and we're going to start it with true. We're going to initialize it as true because when this is first hit, um, when this, this code is first visited, um, you are loading the screen. The screen is loading because you have this Ajax call, this, you know, this fetch that needs to go to the server, server needs to do some stuff and then send back a response and then we get the response and we do something with it and only then and there, once we're doing something with it, then we're done loading, okay? So we're gonna use state to say, hey, while we are loading, don't do anything. In other words, I'm going to put the return down here at the bottom to say, hey, if we're loading, 
don't navigate away. Don't redirect, right? Because that's sort of our problem here is we are redirecting um, away and that kind of breaks everything. So while we're loading, just have a div or something saying loading. Like just show a div. Like You can make this fancier, obviously. This is the least fancy way to do this. Um, you can even just make it blank, but for now we can put loading. So hey, while we are loading, then show a div that says loading. Once we are done loading, so once is loading is set to false, which we can do once the promise resolves, then we do something else, right? Then we can do the rest of our logic. Um, so I'll get there in a moment. Um, what is our logic? Our logic is based off of is valid. Okay, so the same concept can be applied here. We can have some state for is valid and set is valid. Um, and we can start the state, uh, I guess, as null for now. Because it's, we don't know for sure that it is or isn't valid. We just know that it, we don't really know yet. So basically on this side of the equation, so if we are no longer loading, that's where this section means after the colon means we are no longer loading, then we get to decide, okay, do we render the children or do we navigate away? And that is kind of based on is valid. So once we're done loading, hey, is it valid? Are we valid here? Does it equal true and if is valid equals true then we send it along to the children or the child or whatever view we're trying to render otherwise then we do the navigate away we navigate to the uh, login page right like so um cool so that's sort of our is loading okay i saved it and then it restructured the code but it's this code is exactly what i just typed in now we need to adjust this. So when we are done with the promise, the promise has been returned and we have our is valid data, we can now, because we're getting it right here, right? Is valid is being sent back from this API call to our backend. So what we can do is we can set is valid to be is valid, which is the data we're getting back from the API. And now that we have that, we can say set is loading to be false because we're done loading. And then we get rid of this return statement. Um, and do we get rid of this one? I guess we don't have to get rid of that one. It can return prematurely, I guess. Um, oh, we have an internal server error. What is our internal server error? Uh, okay, it went away. So you get what I mean, right? Hopefully you guys get what I mean. It's it's just a, it's a small variation. It's a bit more code, but the concept sort of makes sense. If we're loading, wait, wait, right? That's what I'm trying to say is don't navigate away from the screen. Don't do anything crazy yet. Um, just render a div to say that we're loading and only when we're ready to either load the child or navigate somewhere else, only when we're ready, then we do that stuff. Okay, and that's what this code is accomplishing. So let me try to log in. And okay, so there is an internal server error. Um, token equals blah, 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 500 error. Uh, what is the 500 error? We have a null pointer exception. Oh, what was the null pointer exception? What have I done? Uh, this was working before. So at least it was working in my uh, variation of the code when I had from the code that I deleted, from the code, from the video that I deleted, this was working. Or the portion of the video, whatever you want to call it. Um, let me just see. So let me go to dashboard. So see, there's our loading. It's hitting in here. User details. Okay, user details is null. Uh, why is user details null? Um, I... So we had done all this stuff. We were passing in the authentication principle. Um, user details is null, because I assume user is null. So why is user null? Authentication principle. <clears throat> so, I mean, I guess we can do a null pointer check here and say, hey, if, uh, you know, return, you know, user details is not equal to null and, you know, then you can do username and all that stuff. So that sort of avoids that null pointer exception. I'm not sure why it's null, but basically this is going to say, hey, this is not a valid login attempt. 
Whereas I believe it should be a valid login attempt because we did type in the correct correct credentials. But let, let's just, um, so it loads. Okay, it go, goes here. So we don't have any errors now. So let's do a, a valid login and say login. Interesting. So data is coming back as false. So the data that's coming back is false. Um, where was I, I had put in, um, I had put in console log statement somewhere. Was it the fetch service? Oh yeah, I had done a whole bunch of stuff in here. So I, I did all this stuff. This actually I can undo. I, I believe I can undo all this because it's not actually, it's not doing anything helpful. Um, I tried to, this is matter. I said I spun my wheels for like 30 minutes. <laughs> this is part of the me spinning my wheels. Let me, uh, let me go to my GitHub uh, here and uh, desktop. Let me roll back the changes from fetch service because I don't believe you guys saw me do that. And let me just roll them back and pretend like I didn't do anything. So there you go. The code is back to where it was previously. Um, but we still have a problem to debug. Let me try to log in again and see if that fixes it. No. So we don't get any errors. Great. But it doesn't actually render our view properly. So the question is, why is it not rendering our, our view properly? Um, well, I guess, sorry, I already know the answer. It's the, uh, the user, um, the user being passed in is, is, uh, empty. It's null, right? Which, um, should not be the case. Cause we just log, we should have just logged in with, with valid credentials. So, um, let me have a look and debug the reason why that is the case. Oh, right. So user details is null because we're not passing in any user details. When we pass in the JWT here, um, if we have it, we should pass it in. I was going back and forth in my mind when I was uh, doing this before um, uh, as to whether or not this should be populated or not. Um, and it should. If we have a JWT, that means if we have a JSON web token, that means that we have logged in successfully at some point, which means we have information that we can give to our our method for validating the token, which is we have the username, as well as the uh, the username from the user de uh, user details, which is the logged in user. We have that info, so we should be able to pass it in. So yes, we should pass that in when we log in. Boom. Then we go to the dashboard, and we are here. Now, this is good. This is you know. Uh, looks like it's working. Let's do a bunch of test cases, a couple test cases. Let's delete the J JWT completely and then refresh this page. So the expected functionality here is it should redirect back to the login page because we've gotten rid of the JWT. Cool, it redirects back to the login page. Um, so we know that works. And let's just log back in again just to make sure that we can log in. Cool, it works. We have a new JWT. Now I'm going to delete the JWT again. And this time I'm going to go to my server and I'm gonna change the expiry date, uh, the, the time it takes to expire the token, uh, which is up here. So in my JWT util, I have the token validity like duration here, uh, which is essentially a month, okay? 30 is the days, these are hours, you know, minutes, seconds. So basically this says each token is valid for 30 days, right? And you can modify this, as I said at the beginning of the video, you can set this to be whatever you like. I'm gonna set it to like five seconds because this value is in seconds. So I'll reboot my uh, uh, Tomcat, my uh, web server. And now when I sign in again, I'll refresh the page because I have no JWT. When I refresh, it's gonna log me, I'm logged out, so it's gonna redirect me to log in. When I log in, I will be able to log in, but now the JWT that I receive is only valid for five seconds. Four, three, two, one expired. So now my token has just expired, right? Because we waited five seconds. So now if I refresh uh, this page, it should redirect me to the login page if all goes well. Loading. So you saw a little loading there. If, uh, if you didn't, it was up there in the, in the top left. So now this behavior is correct. So now we can log back in. We should be able to see the page. We should be able to refresh really quick and still good, still good, still good. We're still valid. We're still valid. And then oh, five seconds has passed. Now we've logged out. So mwah, beautiful. So that only took me 13 more minutes instead of like over half an hour and not getting a resolution. So um, that is the sort of solution that we have in place now. Um, so that fixes our timeout issue. Um, now moving forward in the, in the next lesson, I want to dive into um, the, I guess the actual design now. We need to start to outline what, this, what is this app supposed to look like uh, once we log in and start to do stuff and what's the actual functional 
dom uh, real behavior here that is useful, right? I am building this application for myself to use in my own business, okay? My bootcamp and my students are, you know, the, the workflow that we have for uh, submitting assignments, for students submitting assignments and and for those assignments getting reviewed by our code reviewers and then the code reviewers interacting with the students, it's all really not great. And this app is supposed to solve that whole workflow. So now we can start to get into what should it look like and how should it behave and that is hopefully the fun part of this whole thing. Um, however many videos we are in here, like 20 some odd videos in, we're finally hitting the real fun part in my opinion. So um, I look forward to seeing you guys in that next lesson where we will be diving into um, implementing some of the fun stuff. Take care of yourself. If you haven't already, go ahead up here and click on the little circle with my face in it or whatever to subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already subscribed, most people are not subscribed. I don't know why. If you like this stuff, if you've watched this entire video, shouldn't you be subscribed? Anyway, go ahead, subscribe, and uh, you know what to do from there. Take care of yourself. Happy learning, and bye for now.